division, and then we have to use it to solve. So let's go to dividing. Which is right here. And we have to be thinking complex <clears throat> conjugate, complex conjugate. Division is special. Why do I have to use a complex conjugate? Because I can't leave I in the denominator. Why can't I leave I in the denominator? Because it's a square root. It's the square root of negative one, and we know we can't leave that in the denominator. So I think about that complex conjugate piece. It said, if it's a plus bi, I have to multiply by a minus bi. And then I have to start with this goofy one. It's just three i. So I think, okay, if I had to write it like that, I'd write it as zero plus three i. So that would be the original. So that means it's conjugate be 0 minus 3i. Now I'm not going to write 0 minus 3i up here, but it shows that we need to multiply the top and the bottom by negative 3i. Now, some books are going to have you just multiply by i on the top and the bottom. That will do the job as well. This book kind of teaches use the complex conjugate all the way through. So <coughs> that way we won't be confused about whether we use a conjugate when we don't. And on the bottom, what I care about. Not that the top isn't important, it's just that I want to make sure I'm not going to have an I left in my denominator. That's the reason I'm doing this. So 3 times negative 3 would give me negative 9, and I times I would give me I squared. Well, I still have I in the denominator. I don't really, do I? What's I squared? It's negative 1. So this is really negative 9 times negative 1 which means my denominator is going to be 9, which is exactly what I want in the problem. I can't have imaginaries in the denominator. I can have them in the numerator. I just can't have them in the denominator. So now we still have to go back through here. So up here, we would just distribute that negative 3i to everything across the top. So negative 27i and then minus 36i squared. And just like happened with the denominator, you'd say, oh, wait a minute, that's going to be a negative 1. So it would be negative 27i minus 36 times negative 1. And then you realize, well, negative 36 times negative 1 is going to be plus 36. Plus 27i. Oh, we're almost done. Almost done. I mean, you might look at that and say, okay, I can see, I can divide stuff out of this. But one part that we need for when we work with complex numbers, it needs to be in standard form. So we might as well go ahead and write this as 36 divided by 9 minus 27 divided by 9i. Because we need our answer to be a plus bi. And then we can reduce. You know, or we can do the division. It makes it a little bit easier. You know, 36 divided by 9 is 4. Negative 27 divided by 9 3. And I know on this test it says when you're working with imaginaries, you have to put your answers in standard form. So instead of factoring a 9 out right here and then canceling, this is probably just easier to do in standard form to write it with the means we need to reduce those. So that was kind of goofy because it was a pure imaginary number down there. But we managed to get rid of that radical. In fact, we don't even have a denominator anymore, let alone a radical in the denominator. This one's going to take little bit more work. But I think the first step makes a little more sense because they're always saying use the conjugate. Use the conjugate. What's the conjugate of 1 minus 4i? 1 plus 4i. Yeah. And we can't just do that to the bottom. We learned a long time ago that if we do the bottom we have to do the top. And now again, I'm going to do the denominator because I want to make sure I'm going to get a real number down there. First times first is 1. I don't have to do outside times outside and inside times inside because they're going to cancel out. That's why we have this minus and this plus. That's some of the difference we have. Last times last would be negative 16 I squared. What do you see there that's helpful? Is what? Negative 1. So this will really be 
1 minus 16 times negative 1. And then you realize, oh, that's going to be 1 plus 16, which is 17. Now on the pack, we still have to do the foil. So, you know, we're probably going to end up with something with an I up there. But let's see what happens. First times first, 2. Outside times outside, plus 8I. Inside times inside, plus 3i. Last times last, plus 12i squared. And hopefully, again, that superstitious i squared will be at least negative 1. So this will really be 2 plus 11i minus 12. Well, now I can put the 2 minus 12 together. So that will be negative 10 plus 11i. And keep going. And now I want to see if that can be reduced. And the easiest way to see if it can be reduced is just to write it in standard form. So negative 10 seventeenths plus 11 seventeenths i. We divide everything up there, the two terms, by 17. Can we reduce 10, negative 10 seventeenths? No go? Okay, how about 11 seventeenths? Nope, that one's done. So there's no reducing involved in this one at all. Let's just put it in standard form. Stop. So the first one had a pure imaginary for our denominator, and this one we needed that complex conjugate because it was a complex number. So let's just start this and see if everybody can go from there. Take a look at 5a. What should we multiply the numerator and the denominator by? Good, 3 minus 4i. Now don't start doing that yet because I want to go down to b talk with you about what we should multiply that one by on the top and the bottom. What do you think? Negative 6i. Good. Now, C has bigger numbers. I'm going to have you guys go ahead and try to do these two, and I'll get you a piece of candy so that you can work with a candy partner and see if you can get them. If you want a challenge, then you can go on to part C and work on the do it. So some groups I know are going to be still working through C, and it's okay because I probably already checked your paper with you and told you you had those first two right up there. What about C? Yeah, Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Negative and negative and negative. Oh, okay. All righty. So, taking a look at A, which I think was the more difficult of the two. You're multiplying by that 3 minus 4i. And that gives you 9 minus 16i squared, and the brain says, oh, i squared is negative 1. So that's going to be 9 plus 16, which is 25, which is huge, by the way, because we had to get rid of that i in the denominator. And then you just foil very carefully on the top. We've got
got 15 minus 20i minus 6i, but here's where I would say probably five people out of the two classes wrote down um, that this would be a negative 8i squared, but it's negative times negative, so it's a positive 8i squared. And that means that i squared will make that minus 8. And 15 minus 8 is 7. Negative 20i minus 6i is negative 26i. Put it in standard form and see if you can reduce it. So 7 divided by 25, 26 divided by 25. Keep that subtraction in there. Slap an i at the back, and you notice nothing cancels. You know, that one is just, it's done where it is. For b, this was a pure imaginary number. It did not have a real part. So what we had to do was multiply by negative 6i on the top and the bottom in order to get rid of it. So this gave us negative 36i squared. i squared is negative 1, so a negative and a negative makes a positive. Then you go back and look at your numerator. 4 times negative 6i will be negative 24i. Negative i times negative 6i will be positive 6i squared. I saw a couple of people with the wrong sign on that one. But i squared makes it negative anyway, so it becomes negative 6 plus 24i. You bring that along, and then, yeah. Okay, let's go back here. We've got negative 24i, and then we have plus 6i squared. Oh, it shouldn't. It is a negative. Yeah, right. I was like, what? Yeah, no, I changed both of them instead of change. Yep, I changed both of them. There we go. So let me change this sign. All right. So both of these are going to end up with negatives in there. There we go. Thank you. So that one, especially once you get this in standard form, you can see that you need to reduce, and you just reduce from there. Now, this one, I don't know that it's any harder. It's just that it has bigger numbers, and so that sometimes scares some people. Um, only focus on that denominator to start with. What is our complex conjugate for that? I do know what you're talking about. <laughs> What's 8 minus 7i? There we go. So, on the bottom, like I said, the numbers get a little large here. First times first, 64. But we don't have to do outside times outside and inside times inside if we don't want to. We go to last times last and we get negative 49i squared, which we know is going to be negative 1. So it'll be 64 plus 49, which doesn't make us happy because that's a really nasty 113. Oh well, it's not I anymore. I mean, that's the good part of this, Abby. Eight times eight is sixty-four. Now, some people on this one think I don't have to do the middle terms because they're going to cancel out. No, they're not. This is a minus, and this is a minus. They're not opposite signs. So we're going to have minus fifty-six i minus fifty-six i, and then last times last will be plus forty-nine i squared. got negative 7 times negative 7, and then i times i. So let's see what happens here. Because this is now a negative 1, so we'll have 64 minus 56i minus another 56 is minus 112i, and we'll have minus 49 in the back. So now we need to know what 64 minus 49 is. What is it? 4 or 15. Some people were already done with this one. And so we'll have 15 minus 112i. It's possible that it's reducible, so we better write it in standard form and take a peek. 15 over 113 minus 112 over 113i. Any numbers that you can think of for 15 and 113? And let's just say you're looking at that going, Cedar Home, I would never do that in my head anyway. Then don't. Use your graphing calculator and see if it's reducible. You don't have to do it in your head.
you can punch it in and let the calculator tell you if it's reducible. 15 divided by 113, and then math number one, it's not reducible. <coughs> if it were, it would give us the reduced amount. 112 over 113 we know is not reducible, but again, if you didn't know that, math number one, you just get it right back, it's not reducible. It's not going to happen. All right. That's dividing. So if I just gave you a problem right now and said there'll be a problem with probably this type of problem with not as big a number as on the test, 43210 being about confidence levels. We've got two digit reduced, so we can get these numbers up there again. Okay. So we have time to do our good. All right, we have more to do, but please thank your partners for their wonderful help and come on back. As long as you can pay attention. All righty. Now, this next part, you might look at this and say, how does this fit in? All we've been doing is stuff with I, and not all of a sudden they're saying, solve these things. Well, this whole chapter has been about solving quadratics. We need to know, when we solve quadratics, we might get an imaginary solution. It might not happen. So when I look at this, it says, how do you solve a quadratic equation that has this form? AX squared plus C equals zero using properties, use the properties of equality to isolate the variable. Now why did they say that? I mean, isn't that factorable? Couldn't we put a two, pull a two out of there and factor? We could, but we go a whole lot of nowhere fast. With this one, there's no middle term. So factoring is probably the longest way to do a problem. There's no x term anywhere in here. So for this, we go back to, I'm just going to subtract 32 from both sides. And now, you're going to tell me the next steps, because I know you know them. What do you do? Yeah, divide by 2. find the square root, and that means a plus or minus, so we've got to put a plus or minus. Can we simplify the square root of negative 16 in our heads, or are we going to write that? Or I, yeah. If you can't, don't worry about it. Just come off to the side and say, okay, square root of negative 1, square root of 16, oh, that's 4, that's 4i. So when we solve quadratics, we can get imaginary solutions. It can happen. We just have to keep our heads about us. So, now that we did that one, I'll bet you could take me right through A and B very quickly. What would you do to solve 6A? <laughs> you're already doing 20. it. 20. I know, I look out there and you guys are all like this. I know you're already doing the problem. Then, 5 by 5, yeah, quit yakking at us, lady. We just want to have our answer down here. All right, x squared is negative 4. Then what do you do? <laughs> well, out of curiosity, are you guys going straight to 2i at that point? Or are you still writing down square root of negative 1 square root of 4? How many people can go straight to 2i? Two all right. And then I won't keep writing down all of those little steps if you've got those. And B, it's not quite as pretty, is it? Nope. How'd you solve it? Doesn't have as many steps. This one doesn't simplify nicely, does it? How do you write the square root of negative 15 simplified? Yeah, i square roots of 15. Now, if you're saying, okay, see it at home, but the book said the rest of the time we're supposed to put i in the back. Here's the reason the book doesn't do that for this problem. They're really worried that somebody's going to make their radical too long, and it's going to look like the i is underneath the square root symbol, which would be very, very bad. So that's the reason that you'll see them put the i in front. 
time to time, if they're worried, your answer is, is going to start running together a little bit. So we get imaginary solutions. It just happens. And the, our goal here is to be able to solve any quadratic. So we get to this one. I'm telling you, we go through lists. The first thing we try is to solve by factoring because that's the easiest way to do it. But I'm also going to tell you, this one's not factorable. Nope. So then the next thing we try would be completing the squared, which we haven't done for a little while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one and the next one with the quadratic formula. And the last one is a little bit easier to do with completing the square. I don't want to show you a complicated completing the square problem first. So we'll do quadratic formula. Is this ready for the quadratic formula? Okay. Has a zero. Okay. Our A is? B is? C is? And X equals? Negative of negative 3 plus or minus uh, so 9. Good. So now we have to see what we have underneath there. Well, we've got 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 5 is 40. 9 minus 40 is negative 31. Almost done. There's only one thing we can do to simplify this. What is it? That's it. All we can do is take the square root of negative 1 out of there, and we have to. We have to take that out. And for the quadratic formula, that would be a perfect answer. We would not separate that. What this says, when I see this on a test is, you knew exactly what you were doing with the quadratic formula, and you left so it could be seen as a quadratic formula answer. So there's actually two imaginary solutions here. There's 3 plus i squared to 31 over 4 and 3 minus i squared to 31 over 4. So let's try it again with this one. By the way, challenge question. I said before that I didn't want to do the last one and this one by completing the square because they would be more complicated completing the square problem. Now, you didn't see me stand up here and stare at this forever to know that. What number up here makes this a more difficult completing the square problem? The 3. Remember, if you want to complete the square, we have to have a 1 in front of the x squared. So that's why I'm using the quadratic formula for these, because it'd be a little tougher to do with completing the square. We're good to go, right? We don't have to move anything over. So what's A? C. And x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 all over 6. Square root of negative 1. Negative 23. Almost done. What can we do that still could be simplified? Take the i out of the yes. There it is. That's the best we can do. But we have the two answers right there. 1 plus i squared to 23 over 6 and 1 minus i squared to 23 over 6. So, I saw that these were solved for 0. I took a look and said, oh, x squared is a 1. So, well, maybe we better use a quadratic formula because we're a little rusty with completing the square. But this would be a really good problem to scrape off our rust because this one has an x squared in it. And it is all set to go. So, completing the square was before Thanksgiving, and here's how we check. We said, is there anything in front of x squared? Is it already a perfect square trinomial? No. What number tells us no? Five. Yeah. Five's not a perfect square. So we better move it over to the other side and find a number that is a perfect square. And these are the boxes that help us remember whatever we do to one side we have to do to the other. Now, we have to remember that little teeny baby formula for finding. <laughs> B over 
2 squared. So what's B in this equation? So negative 4 over 2 squared is going to be negative 2 squared, which is? 4. 4. We're going to add 4 to both sides. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So that side's ready to go. The whole reason we did this is so that we could get a formula squared. And that's what a perfect square is. So what goes in there? X minus 2. Now we're not done because X isn't by itself, but we are super duper close. Because all we have to do is get rid of that squared symbol for the next step. How do you get rid of it? Square root. Uh oh. What's the square root of negative 1? Pi. So don't forget to do the plus or minus. And then we've got our square root of negative 1, which is pi. Almost done. We've got an x by itself. Add 2. Another challenge question. Why would I write it that way and not plus or minus i plus b? Because i is real number. Right. Standard form is a plus b i. Real number part and imaginary part of it. Add over. Well, how about solving then? 43210 beyond solving it. Now. When we have imaginary solutions. And we're going to do a lot of review. We're going to do a practice test together in class the next couple of days. So we can make sure we're going to be good with completing the square. Even if it's a little bit tougher problem. There is the assignment.